So there's a new object that's been added in JavaScript called the international object. It's written like this, INTL. And it's got a whole bunch of functions for formatting and comparing strings and numbers and dates and times. Lots of great stuff. I'm going to make a couple videos on this. This video is focused on the comparison of strings. So if you've got strings that are written in multiple languages, if you need to sort things and you're not sure what order things are going to be so sorted in, or if you're not sure what languages are supported, then this is, this is going to help you. I have here uh, in my script, the first method I want to look at is inside the international object has an object called collator. This collator object has a method called supported locales of. You can pass an array into this method and it's going to tell you from that array which one of the locales or all of the locales are supported. So in my example, I've got these nine language codes. So I've got Swedish, English, French, Danish, German, Chinese, Russian, Greek, and Norwegian. I've got those formats in my array and passing that in and what I'm getting back is six of the nine are coming up here. So if I come in and I check inside of here, I've got the Canadian English ABC extended. This is giving me the English and French. I've got German, which is the DE, Greek, which is the EL, Russian, and Swedish. So these languages are supported on my computer. I have these locales installed, but I don't have the Norwegian, I don't have the Chinese and I don't have the Danish. And so those are not showing up in this array. Okay, so you can find out, you can provide a list of language codes and then find out on the user's computer which locales are supported. This may be of use to you when you're doing string comparisons, when you're deciding which languages you want to display on the page. If you've got content that's available in multiple languages, you can check to see which ones are supported. All right, um, we've got the next section here is the compare method. So we do a new international collator. So we create a collator object. This collator object is the string thing that's capable of doing string comparisons. If you've got words, I'm doing all these examples just with two letters, but you can do it with words, with sentences, whatever you want. It's going to basically do the same thing as a JavaScript sort. It's going to give you back one negative one or zero. So in this f first two examples right here, I have no value put inside the collator for the first one. The second one, I've got English. So if you don't provide something, it uses the locale that you, the computer is currently set to, which for me is English. So I have these two should be doing the same thing. And oh, actually, I'll change this just to a simple letter A. There we go. Refresh. All right, negative one is what I'm getting for both of these, line 16 and 17. And that's because A is a lower number than Z. If you were to look at the UTF value for these two characters, the ASCII value for these two letters, A is always coming before Z in English. Therefore, negative one is the answer that I get back for both of these. And these should be the same because EN is my language. Now, I've done a bunch here with Swedish. Looking at these, um, we've got one, 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 the first three. So A with umlauts comes after the Z. A with umlauts comes after the A. A with the, I forget the name of it. Sorry about that. The little uh, circle character above this makes it sound like an O. Um, also comes after the A. So after all these things right here, and then we've got a negative one. So this character comes before this one. If I compare the same thing, I get a zero. So negative one, zero, or one. This is how you get these different values. Now we can actually specify more options. There are more options available to us. So what we do is we come in here to where the language is specified. Um, I'll just do this first one right here. And right now it's coming up as one. We can add another object as a second parameter inside of here. And there's a bunch of options. First one, sensitivity. And this one's got a few different values. Base, accent, or variant are three of the strings that we can put in. So if we say base, 
which I believe is the default for this one. This option is going to say that um, upper, lower case, treat them the same, don't do case first. Um, an A and an A with umlauts, those ones are going to be treated the same thing. So let's actually, let's change this to a letter A for the first one. Or I will come down to one that already has this. That's what I'll do. So this middle one right here. So I've got a, a regular A. There we are. Okay, coming in here, adding the options. So with base, these two should be treated in the same way. So the third one. And if I do uh, accent, I would expect that one to be different. Variant, still getting the same thing. Let me try the A with umlauts instead. Nope, still getting the same thing. Okay, I'll come back to that one. Ignore punctuation. And with punctuation, we can set this to true or false. I'm going to space these out to make it a little easier to read. There we are. So ignore punctuation. Numeric is a very useful one. With numeric, what you can do is if you've got a string that's got the number 1, the number 2, and the number 10 in it, um, if you were just doing comparison of like the UTF value, 1 would come first, then the 10, then the 2. doesn't matter that it's 10 and 1. It's looking at it as a string. If you wanted to compare it numerically, we set numeric to true. So then 10 would come after the 2 instead of after the 1. And there's a case first option that allows us to look at things, whether it's uppercase and lowercase. So a lowercase a and an uppercase a should ignore those things. Okay, ignore punctuation, and let's go base. There we go. That's what I was looking for, to show the zero. So with base, uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. Um, we're saying numeric true. We're not doing numbers here, but it wouldn't matter. Um, actually, we could with uh, numeric. Let's do that. Let's do a 10 and the number 2 with numeric set to true. We don't need the other options, but with numeric set to true, 2 should come before this. Okay, so we got a 1. That means that 10 is a higher number than 2. If we set numeric to false, then it's doing a string comparison, and it becomes a negative 1. So 10 comes before 2 if it's being treated as a string. And it's just doing this, changing this numeric option. Okay, so that's... Um, that I've done a couple of other ones here. I've got the German comparison and Danish comparison of different letters to see where they show up. But this is really all about doing string comparisons when it comes to different languages because rumor has it the internet is available outside of the US and Canada. So other languages are actually used. You are going to have data coming from APIs in different languages. If you need to sort them, this is how you can do it, and be sure that you're not just doing it in the ASCII order or the UTF-8 Unicode order. You can actually compare these strings in the locale that you need. So that's it. That is the internationalization, localization of strings, uh, checking to see which locales are supported in your computer, checking to see, or in your user's browser, and doing string comparisons so that you can do sorts. And uh, I would encourage you to uh, play around with these options and experiment with them to see the values that you're getting. Uh, I know I was getting a couple of unexpected results there with the, the base and the variant, but 
please try this out, test it. Um, with a little bit of work, it's, it's really not that difficult to do, and it can be very valuable, especially if you are building multilingual websites. Okay, that's it. If you found this useful, please share it with other people. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.